Hello everyone. In this video, we'll introduce the IPT, Integrated Publishing Toolkit, which is the main tool used to publish biodiversity data at GBIF. We'll first start with a few slides presenting the main features and the requirements of the IPT, and then we'll get our hands dirty and start uh, working directly in the user interface of the IPT. Let's go. So a first and very important feature of this tool is that it allows publishing the four classes of datasets that were discussed in the previous screencasts. Occurrences, taxonomic checklists, sampling events datasets, and metadata only datasets. Another important feature is that it supports a very large datasets. You can see here, for example, a screenshot of the IPT instance of Vertnet, an American publisher. And you can notice that this eBird dataset contains more than 200 million records and it's, it's uh, published through the IPT. So those kind of uh, data volumes are supported. Uh, the only thing is that you will have to ensure that you have enough disk space to contain all this, all this data. Uh, the IPT is an international project that supports several languages. For now, it's available in English, but also in French, Spanish, Chinese, Portuguese, and also Japanese. The IPT is not a typical desktop software that you download and install uh, directly on your laptop, for example, uh, but it's server-side software, which means that uh, it is typically installed on a server somewhere, and then you can access it and configure it through a web interface in your, in your web browser. Uh, let's see different possible setups. Here we have uh, the most simple one. We have several institutions uh, on the screen, like the Belgian Biodiversity Platform or Canadensis. And each of these publishers will have its own IPT server and will configure it and push data through JBIF. So one IPT instance per publisher. It's not the only way. On this slide, we can see a few more things. Um, First, that there are several datasets published. Uh, you can see checklist of fishes in Belgium, bees occurrences, marine sampling dataset, and others. So an IPT instance can publish several datasets, but it can also publish those datasets on behalf of several publishers or several institutions. And that's something else that showed here. You can see that this uh, IPT server on the left is publishing uh, two datasets for the Belgian biodiversity platforms, but also other datasets for the Museum of Natural Science or the University of Brussels. So one IPT can publish several datasets and do it on behalf of several institutions. Regardless of where datasets are hosted, they will always be clearly associated with the publishing institution and country. As the IPT is a server-side software, it has to be hosted somewhere and there are hosting needs. If you want to have your own IPT server, you will, for example, need a stable connection, some technical skills to install it and keep it running on the long term, but also the long-term commitment of your institution to, to fulfill those needs uh, on the long term. If you cannot satisfy those requirements, don't worry. There are many options, and JBIF provides a document that addresses this issue in the context of BIT projects. The IPT takes data security seriously. When publishing a dataset, you can, for example, decide to keep it private for some time. It also has the concept of user and roles, and you'll be able to choose who can or can't manage a dataset uh, in the long run. The IPT can be configured either in test mode or in production mode. Production mode is for real-world use, and all published data will be available at GBIF. 
Test mode, on the other side, is designed for learning and for experimentation. The datasets published in test mode will not be visible on the GBIF website. Please note that the IPT cannot uh, be switched from one mode to another. So when using an IPT, you have to know from start if you need to connect to a test mode IPT or a production mode IPT. IPT is a standard compliant project and your datasets are made available in different standard formats for maximum interoperability. It's also an open source project and while it's developed by the GBIF Secretariat, external contributions such as bug reports or new translations are always uh, welcome. Finally, here is the IPT page on the GBIF website, www.gbif.org slash IPT, where you can find a bit more information, link to the full IPT manual, and also the download link. Let's now have a quick tour of the IPT user interface. Uh, I will use my web browser and connect to the address of the IPT I want to use. And here is the main uh, homepage of the IPT. We can already see a few interesting things. We can see uh, it's a test mode IPT here in the banner on the top. We can see a language uh, selector on the right of this banner. In the middle of the screen, uh, we notice that there are already two uh, datasets published through this IPT because it was used uh, for other purposes before. And at the bottom of the screen, we have several interesting links. Um, for example, the IPT user manual or a link that allows reporting a bug or requesting a new feature. I will now use the credentials and uh, connect to this IPT instance to see what happens. I click the login button. Here we are. Uh, I have two more tabs that appeared here. They were not uh, there before, before my login. The first one is Manage Resource. It's a very important tab because it's where most of the work is happening when we will uh, work with the IPT. On the top of the screen, we have a list of uh, resources uh, you have to write to manage. So it's three resources or three data sets that I can uh, configure or reconfigure or republish those kind of things, existing resource I can manage. And at the bottom of the screen, there is a short form that allows to create a new resource or a new dataset. The next tab is called administration. And it's there because my user accounts uh, does not only allow to publish new datasets or manage existing datasets, but also to manage the IPT instance itself. And so I have global uh, options here to, for example, to add a new user account or to link the IPT to a different, uh, to a different organization. So this was just a quick tour so you can see the interface. And in the next screencast, we will actually publish our first dataset.